Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Uh, inshallah, I can see brothers, I, uh, I can't see that far, but please, inshallah, brothers, no photos of any types, please, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. Uh, don't record me in any way, shape, or form, please. It's very, very important that whenever you come to a talk, um, I just take the camera, man. So, wallahi, I can't whenever, like, I see a camera and I start stressing. So, please, inshallah, no one record me in any way, shape, or form. It's important that when you come to a talk, that you come with your heart open. Don't worry about your phone and don't worry about the picture and don't worry about recording it. And, wallahi, I always say, when the phone starts recording, your heart stops recording. And what benefit is it that you've got it on your phone, but it's not in your heart? What's the point? Uh, I just heard a camera snap. <laughs> oh, my soul. Please, please, brothers, no recording and no pictures, inshallah. Bismillah, walhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers, in a hadith that was narrated by Umar bin al-Khattab, he says, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is one of the greatest ahadith in our deen. I believe it's hadith number two in Imam al-Nawawi's 40 ahadith, al-Arbi'in al-Nawawiyya, where he says, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Umar, he narrates, he says, we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a man came. He said, a man appeared from a distance that no one knew. And I wish I had time because dissecting the hadith is absolutely incredible and every word in the hadith is crucial. Medina was a small town and it wasn't a city. It wasn't a city that people that were traveling would, you know, stop in or stop by. Um, it wasn't a transit city. Anyone who went to Medina was specifically going to Medina. It was a small town, had nothing to do with, with any form of traveling. So being a small city and being the Muslims, they knew each other very well. We all go through this. Even in our local masajid, if someone appeared that no one's ever seen before and he walks in and there's something odd about that person's appearance, you see that there's a lot of unspoken... Um, gestures you see like people looking at each other do you know the guy no one Umar ibn Khattab says a man appeared none of us knew him and he wasn't a traveler he didn't look like a traveler he said his clothes were whiter than white his hair was blacker than black he was extremely handsome the man walked into the gathering no one knew who he was he walked straight up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he sat right at the knees of the Prophet of Allah imagine they're sitting there you're sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions. This man walks straight into the gathering, walks straight up to the Prophet of Allah, doesn't look at anyone, doesn't talk to anyone, doesn't introduce himself. He walks straight to the Prophet of Allah. He sat down, he put his knees to his knees and he says to him, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni an al-Islam. He says, Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. It's an amazing hadith. If you don't know it, follow it up, read it. Anyway, so he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responds and he tells him about the five pillars of Islam. Then he says to him, O oh Muhammad, akhbirni an al-Iman. Tell me about faith. Tell me about Iman, O Prophet of Allah. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responds with the six pillars of faith. He says to him, An tu'mina billahi wa rasulihi wa kutubihi. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells this strange man, he says to him, the six pillars of Iman is to believe in Allah and his prophets and his angels and the day of judgment 
and to believe in the decree of Allah and to believe in his books. Six of the four, my brothers and sisters, are unseen. To believe in Allah, my brothers, is not like anything else. To be a Muslim is not like anything else. We live in a world where seeing is believing. And that is the exact opposite of being a Muslim. Everyone wants to see. And even Muslims, when we talk amongst each other, even when our hearts are in the right place, brother, wouldn't it be mad? Wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be good if we could just see? I mean, I believe, but you know, if I could just see. And this is a big thing. That if Allah was to just show me, to show you what? What is it that you want to see? And it's almost as though we're trying to convince ourselves that if Allah was to just show me that I would be much more. I would do much more. Or that things would be much different to us. Allah wants your iman. Allah wants your belief without him having to show you. Because if Allah was to show us, my brothers and sisters, then everything changes. Everything changes. To believe in Allah, he says, Can you see Allah, my brothers? We can't. And tu'mina billahi wa rasulihi. Can you see his prophets? We can't see his prophets. Can you see his angels? We can't see his angels. Can you see the day of judgment? We can't see the day of judgment. Four of the six pillars of Iman are unseen. You can't see them. And Allah has designed it as such. Allah wants you and I to believe in him without seeing him. Because that's faith. Because if you were to see, then you don't have an option. And when you don't have an option, you're not special anymore. What makes you unique as Muslims is that we believe in Allah, we believe in his prophet, we believe in the message without seeing. This is Iman. And this quest to wanting to see is nothing but a delusion within our own brains. It's a fallacy. It's, 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 it's actually corruption. And it's important that my brothers, you understand that as a Muslim, we believe in the unseen. And your whole faith is based on the unseen and we take pride in this. I don't need to see Allah to believe in him. I don't need to see the prophet of Allah to believe in him. I don't need to see his angels in order to believe. And if you think that by seeing this would be good, you have no idea, my brothers and sisters. If Allah wanted, he could have showed. And wallah, if we were to understand this pursuit of wanting to see, I don't know how to word this, man, so I might just back off a bit. You know, on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal, imagine this is the day of judgment. This is a day that is 50,000 years long. It is a day when Allah Azza wa Jal will bring onto one plane every single angel, every single prophet, every single human being, every jinn, every animal, everything that Allah Jalla Jalalu has ever created will come forward on this day. And then on the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal, he will call for Jahannam to be brought forward. Jahannam, the actual hellfire, this creation of Allah Azza wa Jal, it will be brought forward to humanity. In the authentic hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he says that Jahannam will be brought forward and it will be dragged 
70,000 brindles, chains, 70,000 chains that are attached to Jahannam and it will be dragged forward. He says 70,000 brindles, chains, and on every chain there are 70,000 angels. 4.9, 4.9 billion angels will be dragging Jahannam forward. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran that when Jahannam, when this creation that was created for no purpose other than to punish humanity, that's it. The only job of Jahannam was to punish the human being. So Allah Azza wa Jal says that on the day of judgment, when Jahannam sees, when Jahannam sees the human being for the first time, it's been created for Allah Alam how many thousands of years? It's been burning for Allah Alam how long? And it's been waiting for this day. So when Jahannam sees the human being for the first time, Allah Azza wa Jal says it will release like an expression. It's like it will burst. It's like it will burst out of anger. And then Allah mentions in the Quran that when Jahannam bursts, and the human being sees this with his own eyes, Allah Azza wa Jal says, at that moment, every single living thing will fall to its knees in prostration to Allah. The good, the bad, the ugly, the Muslim, the non-Muslim, the one who believed, the one who didn't believe, the one who wanted to see, the one who didn't want to see, when they see this with their eyes, they will fall in prostration. But on that day, Allah will say, stand up. Today is not the day of worship. Today is the day of judgment. You believing then is of no value. Believing after you see is of no weight. Your iman then will weigh nothing in the sight of Allah. Allah wants your iman now. So this brother, you know, let me just see. Brother, what do you want to see exactly? Tell me what it is that you want to see. What a time we live in, wallah, it's incredible. What are you after? What, uh, 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 tricks? You after circus tricks? Why is this important? Because my brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, in your lifetime, whether you and I like it or not, every one of us, Allah will put you in a situation where your eyes and your ears will show you and tell you things that contradict what Allah says. What do you do in this situation? And really, that's, that's the whole topic. My young brother and my young sister, your eyes, they belong to Allah. And my job is to bring Iman in Allah and to believe that if Allah says something, then that is the absolute truth, even if my eyes are showing me something else. Because your eyes can play games on you. And people tell me, but brother, I saw it with my own eyes. Well, here, my brother, when you see with your own eyes something that contradicts what Allah says, now you have to disbelieve your own eyes. You're going to tell me, brother, what are you talking about? And this is the fitna of the world today. That, brother, if I see, if I see it, then I believe it. Well, then half your deen has gone right out the window. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he spoke about charity, amazing. Explain this to any human being. If you don't believe in the unseen, the whole subject makes no sense. When the Prophet of Allah spoke about charity, what did he say? He says, a sadaqa, to give in charity, he says, a sadaqa burhan, that it's an evidence, it's a proof. A proof to what? When you give charity, my brother, 
The Prophet of Allah is saying that this is a sadaqah, that this sadaqah you're giving is a burhan. It's an evidence, it's a proof. A proof to what? It's a proof to your iman, to the faith that you have in your heart, that you believe in the unseen. Why? Because the Prophet of Allah, he says, ما نقصا It does not decrease your wealth. Any person who gives anything in charity, this does not decrease your wealth. If you don't believe in the unseen, this whole hadith has no value to you. I have a hundred pounds. And I gave 50 in charity. How much do I have left? Now, I know you want to say 100, <laughs> but don't. I'll start flipping tables, bro. Wallah. <laughs> In your heart, tell me the truth. I have 100, and I gave 50 in charity. What's left? My eyes are not lying. My eyes are not lying. Do I believe my eyes or do I believe Allah? Where am I going with this? Don't you ever believe in your life that haram and sin can ever lead to good, ever. Impossible. Not because I said so. Because Allah said so. These eyes, my brothers and sisters, they play games. And the heart of the Muslim can go left and right based on what they see and what they hear. And if we don't keep our hearts in check, then you've seen what's happening in the world. Anything takes me left and anything takes me right. When a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says to him, oh, Prophet of Allah, my brother is sick. My brother is sick. He has some stomach problems. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says to him, tell your brother that Allah Azza wa Jal has said that honey is a cure, honey is shifa for all sicknesses. So go to your brother and give him honey. So the man goes to his brother, he gives him honey. He took the prescription straight from the doctor himself. You know this hadith, I love this hadith. Anyone else, right? If this was a modern day story, we would have all jumped out, oh, who's this sheikh brother? Who's his knowledge? Where did he come from? Are you sure this is authentic? Are we sure this? No, 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 no. There's no games here. This is a companion who went to the Prophet of Allah. He tells him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, exactly what the problem is. Now the doctor himself is giving you the medicine. He's giving you the prescription. So there's no doubt. It's not like, oh, you know, I misunderstood. He said, give the man honey. So he, so he this man, so this man, he goes to his brother. He gives him the medicine that the doctor just gave him. The next day, the man comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet of Allah, he asks him. He says to him, did you give your brother the honey? He says, yes, our Prophet of Allah, I gave him the honey. He says, how is he? What do you do now? What do you do? He gave him the honey. His brother's still sick. What do you do? And if you think this doesn't happen to us, we experience this, I don't want to say every day, but definitely in your journey to Allah, we all experience this. How many brothers, they came onto deen thinking that everything was going to change. Yet he was met with more difficulties. How many young brothers, I see it all the time. 
Brother, when I was in haram, I had less dramas than I have now. Almost as though he's interpreting that what's happening to him, it's almost like, you know what, brother, maybe I should just go back to my old ways. I had it better then. That's why I never say to anyone that if you come on to deen, your life is going to be better. I can't guarantee you that. He says, to my, he says to my Prophet of Allah, my brother is sick. So what do you do? But Allah said one thing, and now the man's, the man's brother is telling me something else. Allah said, this is the cure. He gave him the cure. He took the cure and it didn't work. So the Prophet of Allah, he says, go back and give him more honey. So he goes and he comes back. If you think the first time was awkward, you can only imagine how awkward it was for him now. He says to him, how is your brother? He says he's still sick. Look at the iman. He says to him, Allah has spoken the truth and the stomach of your brother is lying. Allah says honey is the cure, so go back and give him more honey. So he goes back, he gives him the honey, and on the third he comes back, he says to him, Allah has cured him. He didn't doubt, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't question, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's the same thing, my brothers. Allah puts you and I in situations where your heart now is faced with, with this with this challenge that Allah said one thing, but I'm seeing something else. What do I do? And charity again is the perfect example. You know, I don't know what the situation is like in the UK, but back home in Sydney, especially definitely a few years ago, we were doing fundraisers like almost weekly. Weekly. And at one stage, you know, I was doing these fundraisers and I was going to these events. Brothers and sisters, I had it down pat. Yeah, haram. Oh, I feel sorry for that audience. Bro, I would jump up on that screen. I knew exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it. I could make you feel like the biggest hypocrite if you didn't take off your undies and donate it, bro. <laughs> Wallah, I had it down pat. And yeah, haram, yeah, haram. Every fundraiser, there was always this one maskeen. It was his first time. And the vast majority, brother, they've been there. This is their 10th time over. And the first guy, haram, you know, he's that, he's... He's that caught up with what's going on. He's rattled. He's, I'm there yelling and screaming and everyone's throwing these big pledges and this guy's donating this much and that much. And Yeah, haram, this guy, he's overwhelmed. Little does he know half of them are spinners and they don't even pay their pledges anyway, right? But he doesn't know that, bro. This guy, he's gone to a fundraiser. He thinks, you know, these guys, they're all flying on din and iman and Hubbas is yelling and screaming and rah, 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 and Allah has promised and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Say, ah, haram, the guy sits there and he's that rattled, he's that taken by. Bro, he just gets that, he's that affected. He ends up pledging everything he's got. <laughs> and believe and iman, and if you don't believe, then Allah and his, ah, haram. So the guy gets that psyched. He pledges everything he's got and he's flying. The guy is flying with Iman. He's that excited that he just gave every haram. He thought he was Abu Bakr or something, right? He gave everything he has and then he goes home, haram, and he's so excited to tell his wife that how he's the next Abu Bakr of the Ummah. And then when she comes to hear that he pledged everything he had, she slaps him, pa. And she says to him, who the hell told you to do that? He says to Hubble, she says, well, if he was here, I would have slapped him too. <laughs> now, what are you doing? And immediately from that slap and the words, what are you doing? Now, what's happening to him? Yeah, now, the reality of what he's done is now starting to sink in. But only Hubble isn't on the stage anymore because now he's at home. He's thinking, but man, like he said this verse and that verse and this ayah and that ayah and this hadith and that hadith. And the landlord wants to up the rent and the car's, you know, it's due for registration and this and that. And what about the fees and what about... So now what starts happening to him? Bro, what did I do? 
What did I do? And this happens to all of us. What do you do in this situation? My brothers and sisters, haram can never equal happiness, ever. Even if my eyes are showing me something else. Impossible. Impossible. Allah Azza wa Jal has made it crystal clear that haram can never equal success, can never equal happiness. So no matter what your eyes show you, no matter what your ears are telling you, no matter how tangible this so-called success you're seeing that is coming through the doors of haram, if it contradicts what Allah says, what do you do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, this is Quran now. These aren't the weed interpretation of some weed sheikh that understood the deen weed. No, no. Straight ayat from Allah. Allah says in Surah Taha, this is the principle of life. Young and old, mother, father, young man, young sister, whatever. This is the principle of life. If you ever in your life, if you ever in your life have to trust someone, then you trust Allah and Allah alone. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is always truthful with his words and Allah Azza wa Jal always keeps his promises. Allah never breaks his word, ever, impossible. Hasha lillah, it's unbefitting. Every human being on earth can buckle and break. But Allah Azza wa Jal is the... When Allah speaks, my brother, Allah is the absolute truth. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي Whosoever stays away from my deen, whosoever stays away from my remembrance, whosoever indulges in haram, this is Allah, not me. Allah is saying, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي Whoever stays away from my deen, and the, wallah, in the Arabic, the English doesn't do it justice. The word a'rad, how do you translate it? It's, it's, it's riddled with arrogance. You know, it's like you're presented with something, a'rad, it's like he shunned it, he, he, he rejected, he shunned, he rejected, and he was, he was too good for it. Brother, come to Juma pray. Ah, come on, man, who wants to do that? Brother, come to this talk. Come to the masjid. Come to do good. Come to do halal. Come, 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 come. Waman a'rad. And it was presented to him. The opportunity was there for you. But you thought that you knew better. You had other commitments. You had other priorities. Allah was calling, but you were occupied with something else. Allah says, Waman a'rad an dhikri. Whosoever stays away from my deen and my remembrance, this is the formula. Allah is saying, not maybe, not there's a good chance, not possibly. Allah says, and in Arabic, you can't, you can't affirm something any like any more. Allah says, most certainly, most definitely, for this person. For him is a miserable, wretched life. That's the formula. That's the formula. Waman arada an dhikri, whoever shuns and turns away, he's too busy for deen. Now you can put whatever excuses you want to. Whatever, bro, that's your problem. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ Allah is saying, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ For him is definitely a miserable, wretched life. So you can Snapchat all you want. And you can put on social media how amazing your life is all you want. If you're in haram, you're miserable. 
Not because I said so. Because Allah said, and Allah never lies. So you can smile at me with your porcelain teeth and try to act like you're living it up. But so long as it's coming through the door of haram, you're miserable. Now you may not know you're miserable, that's a different matter. But as a Muslim, as a choice of life, what do I choose for myself? And so many of us, we fall. Brother, look at this guy, man. This guy's doing haram. This guy's doing one, two, three, four. And look at his life. Look where he's at. Look where he's dining at. Look what he's wearing. Look how he's dressed. Look, 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 look. And it's all smiles. Now your brain's having problems because your eyes and your ears are showing you one thing and Allah and His Prophet are telling me something else. What do you choose now? What do you choose? This is how as a Muslim, don't ever allow for your faith to ever be shaken. The whole world can come together. Wallah, the whole world and all of society and everything that's in it, you can come and try to convince me one thing. If Allah says the other, you go with the other, even if my eyes are showing me something else. This is Iman and this is believing in the unseen. And do you think Allah's just promised him a miserable life in this world? Wallah, he's fortunate if it just ends there. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Not only does, not only has Allah promised him a miserable life in this dunya, Ya haram, Ya haram. Allah says, and we shall resurrect him on the day of judgment, blind. Now it's really unseen. Now look how the change of language. Look at the change of circumstances. Waman arada, in the beginning Allah says, Waman arad, he was very arrogant, he's too busy, doesn't have time. Now look at his language. Qala Rabbi. Now the one that was too busy, too arrogant in dunya for Allah, what does he say now to Allah? What's he calling him? Qala Rabbi, oh my Lord. Why? Because now he sees. <laughs> now he knows. Qala Rabbi, lima hashartani a'ma wa qad kuntu basira. Ya Allah, why have you resurrected me blind when I used to see in dunya? Allah says, verily, we sent you our signs in dunya and you chose to be blind to them. So today we shall be blind to you like you were blind to us. Today you shall be forgotten like you, like you had forgotten us. This is our life. As Muslims, my brothers and sisters, we believe in the unseen. We don't believe in the seen. What makes you unique as a Muslim is that you believe in that which you can't see with your own eyes. And this world is rattled with a lot of deceptions. What do you do with your heart? Who do you trust? Have you ever heard this? So many brothers, oh, brother, you know, we don't know who to trust anymore. <laughs> this person says this and that person says this. And 
Do we believe in this person and that person or do we believe in Allah? Has Allah ever broken his word? Ever. Has, a, has Allah ever said something was going to be and it didn't happen? And Allah promises the opposite, my brothers. For those who strive to do good, Allah promises them, Allah promises them paradise and success. Allah never promises you an easy life, ever. If anyone's life was going to be easy, it would have been the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, once I was having dinner, not dinner, I was having lunch. <clears throat> I was having lunch with a friend and as we got talking, we were speaking about, you know, those who, who think that when they come on to deen, that all their problems are going to be solved. And he said to me, brother, you know, when I came on to deen, I had a lot of problems in my life and actually he had so many... He had so much problems that he couldn't find solutions. So he thought that by coming on Tadeen, that the next day he was going to wake up and what? Angels were going to start coming down from the heavens to start helping him out, you know. It's a fitna because many, many young brothers, sisters, they all fall for this trap. And he said to me, Wallah, he said to me that he had committed a crime that... Um, that he had caught for in the next six months and his lawyer was telling him that you're possibly looking at three to five years. He had a $5,000 debt. He was young at the time. I think he said he was about 18. He was in like, I think maybe he was in about four or $5,000 debt. To him at the time, that was a big deal. And he was in this toxic relationship with this girl. You know, like it was just one of those relationships where he just, he's just with her. He doesn't know why he's with her. He knows he can't marry her. She can't marry him. It was just one of those go nowhere relationships you know and he said to me brother my life was a mess he asked me so i thought that if i started praying and i came on to deen that everything was going to be all right so he started praying and guess what happened that court date was only getting closer and that five grand debt was still there <laughs> and that toxic relationship wasn't going anywhere He said, but you know what? He said, you know what the dean did do for me? He said, it changed, it shifted the perspective on things, that's all. It gave things a meaning now. He said, as I continued to pray, that fear, that fear of that court date became less in my heart. He said, and slowly, slowly I started to accept that, you know what, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give me, I'm happy with it didn't take away his court date, didn't take it away. But it made it possible to deal with it, that's all. He said, and as I kept praying and I tried and I did whatever I could, he said, I started to realize that Allah owns the heavens and the earths and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq and that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give me the rizq for this little loan, I'm sure it's gonna come somehow. So that stress, was now diminished. He said, then as I started to get closer to my deen, I started to realize, do I really want to have children with a woman like this? So can you see what, and that's what the deen does. Does it take away your problems? No. Actually, in some cases you get hit with more. But it gives you the tools to navigate through life. And your heart, when your heart is filled with Allah and His Prophet, nothing can break you, nothing. Don't ever look at haram, my brothers and sisters, and ever think in your life that through this I can attain my happiness or I can attain success. Impossible. Impossible. Because that's Allah's promise. نسأل الله عز وجل أن يغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات 
الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy upon the believers wherever they are, wherever they're in need. Ya Allah, be with them, help them, aid them, support them, unite their hearts and our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for coming out. Um, I would like to thank the brothers at One Ummah for making this possible. Um, for <laughs> uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually reward them. They uh, brought me and my children out, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Um, I don't get paid for this, so no one, I don't want any weird thoughts. Alhamdulillah, I don't get paid for this. But they were kind enough to bring out my uh, kids. So for this, we have to show gratitude and thanks. Allah, um, in the hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he who doesn't thank the people, then he doesn't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for coming out. Jazakallah khairan.